Hello, I'm Barbara Ames, Family and Consumer Sciences Agent for Wildcat Extension District, and I'd like to welcome you to today's presentation concerning the Mediterranean diet. In Watt, Kansas this year, we've been learning all about the healthy Mediterranean lifestyle, and so today I'd like to share a bit more in depth about the foods typically in the lifestyle and how they contribute to our good health. So our objectives today would be to list the key ingredients of the Mediterranean, or the, excuse me, the characteristics, key characteristics of the Mediterranean lifestyle. And we're gonna identify some foods in the Mediterranean diet and how they contribute to health, and then apply some strategies for incorporating Mediterranean foods and habits into our life. So when we talk about the Mediterranean region, we're referring to all the countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea. This includes countries in Southern Europe, Northern Africa, and the Middle East. Given that, given that there is a diversity in people, cultures, and agriculture, but there are commonalities among them. And it is these commonalities that have been looked at and researched. The lifestyle that encompasses these commonalities has been associated with fewer chronic diseases, and that's kind of a big deal. The Mediterranean diet describes a lifestyle or a dietary pattern, a characteristic of those living in the regions around the Mediterranean Sea. This pattern was initially brought to the public's attention by Ansel Keys in his Seven Countries study published in 1970. This landmark study was based on the observation that residents in regions around the Mediterranean Sea had the lowest rates of coronary heart disease of any region they'd studied. Although it is called a diet, the Mediterranean diet is not really about cutting calories and restricting foods like many popular diets in America today. Really, it's more about a way of life, or as we say, a lifestyle, a dietary pattern, rather than a strict diet. People in this region follow some of the same patterns. They will typically enjoy a wide variety of whole nourishing foods, mostly plant-based. They eat small portions. They enjoy eating in company and practicing leisurely mindful eating rather than eating on the go. And they still lead an active lifestyle on a daily basis, not just cramming in an hour at the gym. The secret to this lifestyle or dietary pattern rather than a diet is that you can eat the foods you like, but you need to be mindful and eat smaller portions of some foods to fit in the more beneficial foods. Since Ansel Keys made his observations in 1970, many long-term population studies have been done, which helped scientists to discover the findings listed here on this slide. Following this lifestyle can help you lose weight and reduce blood pressure and cholesterol. It also reduces the risk of diseases listed here on this slide. Researchers have found that the more closely the med diet is followed, the lower the incidences of these diseases. Listed here on this slide are the key dietary characteristics of the Mediterranean lifestyle. And we're gonna be discussing these a little bit more in detail along with their associated health benefits. So first off, People living in this region have a very limited intake of highly processed foods. Highly processed foods often have higher amounts of sodium, sugar, and artificial flavors and colors. And at the same time, they have less fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So it's best to eat more food, most of our foods in the original whole form, as you generally get more, cal more nutrients per calorie in this form. A whole food is a food that's been processed or refined as little as possible, and it's free from additives or other artificial substances. Many fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and unprocessed meats are example of whole foods. Secondly, whole grains are consumed more often than refined or white grains in the Mediterranean diet. When grains are refined or processed, the bran or germ, bran and germ are lost, which is where the fiber, vitamins, and minerals are stored. So you, so you are then missing out on valuable nutrients when you're consuming a grain in the processed or refined form. 
Examples of whole grains include brown rice, whole wheat, oats, and quinoa. There are many health benefits that come along with eating whole grains over refined grains. Because they are minimally processed, they maintain their high nutritional content, including many minerals, vitamins, and phytochemicals. The good amount of fiber found in these foods helps us to feel full longer, helps regulate our blood sugar, and helps remove the waste through our digestive tract. Also, high fiber, a high fiber diet has been shown to reduce blood pressure, cholesterol, BMI, or body mass index, index and triglycerides. Number three, people in this region also eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Eating a variety really does offer a larger gamut of nutrients. Consider color of vegetables or fruits. If you're getting a variety of colors, you're likely to be getting a variety, a larger variety of nutrients. Produce is most often eaten seasonally in the Mediterranean region and often locally. Seasonal produce is usually cheaper because the seasonal items tend to be the ones on sale. Seasonal items are also generally more nutritious as well as opposed to something grown, or more nutritious as well, opposed to something grown out of season. What else? Vegetables make up a larger portion of each meal with this diet than in the typical American diet. And fruit is often consumed as dessert as well. That's not to say they don't enjoy their baklava and some other great desserts occasionally. Eating fruits and vegetables is extremely beneficial to health, especially when they're consumed in variety. They are low in calories, but high in nutrients, what we would call nutrient dense, which can help with weight loss or maintenance. They're also high in fiber, and they also provide beneficial bioactive compounds like antioxidants which can help protect us against, against toxins that we are exposed to on a daily basis from other foods that we eat or from the environment. Also, greater consumption of fruits and vegetables has been associated with lower risk for many chronic diseases. Next, the Mediterraneans consume far less red meat than is usual with the typical American diet. Really, they only consume red meat a few times a month or less, and in place of it, they eat seafood, poultry, and eggs. Also, they consume more plant-based proteins like beans, nuts, and seeds, beans, nuts, and seeds on a daily basis. Hummus, which is pictured here on the right, is a food in the Mediterranean diet that's pretty important, and it does provide some protein as well as healthy fats and fiber. For those of you who may not know, hummus is a spread or dip made of chickpeas and pureed with tahini or olive oil, lemon, and sometimes garlic or other seasonings. Okay, let's first look at the health benefits of seafood. Seafood is low in saturated fat, but it's an excellent source of monounsaturated fatty acids, which increase our good cholesterol, which is a protective against coronary heart disease. Fatty fish such as salmon, tuna, and sardines are a great source of a type of fat called polyunsaturated fatty acids. In particular, the omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. These are known to fight inflammation and protect against various chronic diseases. Are you seeing this pattern emerging here about uh, fighting against chronic diseases and helping against uh, the risk of chronic diseases, that is a pattern that we're seeing as we go through the characteristics of this eating plan. The health benefits that come along with consuming more beans, nuts, and seeds include a good source of protein, fiber, healthy fats, and vitamins and minerals. Consuming legumes may reduce your risk of developing coronary heart disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and some cancers. Also, beans have been shown to have gut health benefits. Next, and perhaps one of the most researched components of the Mediterranean diet is olive oil. This is really their main source of fat. In fact, up to 25 to 40% of their total calories is olive oil. 
but keep in mind that this replaces other sources of fat and high calorie foods. Canola oil, nut oils, and avocados are other sources of heart healthy fats that you also might consider with this diet. Similar to seafood, olive oil is low in saturated fat and is an excellent source of monounsaturated fatty acids, which increase our good cholesterol and help to protect against coronary heart disease. Also, olive oil has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-clotting properties. Again, also good for chronic disease prevention. <clears throat> The sixth component of a diet, <clears throat> excuse me, the sixth component of diet is moderate, moderate dairy intake. The key word here is moderate. More often than not, dairy is eaten in the form of cheese, like feta cheese, uh, and Greek yogurt, but not milk as a beverage necessarily. Greek yogurt is thicker and contains more protein and less carbohydrates than regular yogurt. And for this reason, it may be a better option for those with diabetes. Full fat, plain yogurts are usually the choice of Mediterraneans, but they are eating smaller portions and it is eaten once a day or just a few times a week. A serving is one cup of yogurt or one ounce of cheese. One ounce of cheese is about the size of two dice. Yogurt is a good source of protein calcium, vitamin D, and other vitamins and minerals which support bone health and help maintain normal blood pressure. If sold with live and active cultures, yogurt contains probiotics or good bacteria which may benefit gut, gut health. It really is a great food that can be incorporated with many meals, both sweet and savory or as a snack. It's a pretty versatile uh, thing to have in your diet. Red wine might be some people's favorite component of this diet, yet again, it is consumed in moderation. Moderation means one serving a day for women and two a day for men. One serving is equal to about five ounces of wine, so be sure to check your pores and, may, and you may be surprised that you're consuming more than it appears in that wine glass. Also, it's generally consumed with meals, so rarely are they just drinking to drink. Red wine also has some health benefits. The compound in red wine to which most of our, to which most of the health hype is attributed is resveratrol, which may, which many of you may have likely heard of. This compound acts as an antioxidant and is shown to protect blood vessels, reduce LDL or the bad cholesterol and help prevent blood clots. While the news about red wine might sound great if you enjoy red wine, doctors are wary of encouraging anyone to start drinking alcohol. That's because too much alcohol can have harmful effects on your body as well. So if you drink red wine, do so in moderation and only if your health allows. Okay, so the last component of the diet we will discuss is the use of fresh herbs and spices. Those living in the Mediterranean region include lots of fresh herbs and spices in their meals to add flavor, color, and variety. Also, this replaces salt, which is consumed in excess in the United States. Dried herbs can also be used, but fresh provide a more fragrant and flavorful meal. However, use of dried can be very suitable and delicious in soups and other liquid dishes where they are able to rehydrate some. A mortar and pestle, like pictured here in the middle photo, might be used to grind herbs and spices, which helps to really bring out the fragrant and flavorful oils. Herbs are things like basil, oregano, thyme, cilantro, parsley, sage, rosemary, dill, and chives, things that we might grow here in our gardens in Kansas. Spices include things like peppercorn, turmeric, cumin, chili powder, ginger, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, which we wouldn't necessarily find locally. 
Herbs and spices also come with health benefits. Many provide an abundance of phytochemicals such as antioxidants, which help to defend our cells against cellular damage. Also, maybe even more advantageous for many of us is that using herbs and spices in meals reduces the need for salt. This is a huge benefit, especially for those that are needing to follow a low sodium diet. So from a larger perspective, this pyramid helps to explain the Mediterranean lifestyle or eating pattern as a whole, incorporating all of those pieces that we have just discussed. At the base of the pyramid, you see physical activity and enjoying meals with others in a relaxed setting. Then we see fruits, vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, legumes, herbs and spices, all those things consumed with nearly every meal. These foods make up the bulk of the meal. Fish and seafood are also con are often consumed about two times a week, and eggs, cheese, yogurt, and poultry are eaten on a weekly basis, maybe even a couple of times a week, but in more modest portions. Red meats and sweets are at the very top, and they are consumed less often, more likely just a couple of times a month. And you can see that we include plenty of water and some wine in moderation. I think it can be very motivating knowing that just by making a few changes in your diet, you can control your risk factors for some diseases, even though it may seem daunting at first. So next up, we're gonna discuss just a few tips for following the Mediterranean lifestyle. First, be mindful. Plan ahead as much as possible. Grocery shop with intention. Avoid eating on the run, but rather sit down to eat. Enjoy meals with company and eat your food slowly, taking time to notice the smell, texture, and the flavor of foods. This can help us to prevent overeating. Choose more whole grains. Make at least half your grains, make at least half of the grains that you eat whole grains. And read labels looking for whole grain wheat or whole grain um, corn, uh, whatever is listed in the, as the first ingredient on the package of breads or pastas or other grains. Ingredients are listed in the order of the amount they of, of the amount that occurs in the product. So the first ingredient is the most important and the one to look for. Use whole wheat flour instead of white flour when baking. And experiment with various whole grains, such as farro, bulgur, and quinoa. Add them to soups, casseroles, salads, or eat them as a side dish. It could be good to make oatmeal a go-to breakfast food. And for those people with diabetes, Balance your carbohydrate intake by pairing with a protein food such as nuts, fish, cheese, or a nut butter to help alleviate that rise in blood sugar. As we mentioned, eat more fruits and veggies. Think abundance and variety. Those in season are often on sale, less expensive, and maybe more nutritious than those eaten out of season. And frozen veggies may be cheaper may be a cheaper alternative to eating fresh at some times during the year. It can help to cut veggies ahead of time for convenience to save some time and to try various methods of preparing your veggies so you don't get bored or sick of a certain kind of veggie. And often people don't think of including veggies at breakfast, but this can be an opportunity to include more in your day. Try topping toast with cream cheese and tomatoes or cucumbers. Saute veggies in an omelet, that's one way I really like them, or add a handful of greens to a smoothie. Now that's another way that I like it. Add olive oil to foods to replace butter or margarine. Dip your bread in it, add to pastas, or replace cream sauces. Add to soups for flavor and complexity, or combine with some vinegar to toss your your salad. So there are a lot of different ways that they use olive oils. Um, choose extra virgin olive oil most often, but remember, like I mentioned earlier, these healthy fats replace less healthy fats, and we need to consider the total amount of fat we get each day and balance it out. Think of it as using olive oil as your main source of fat and other fats as occasional sources of fat. 
generally we say that up to 20 to 35 percent of the calories um, in an 1800 calorie diet could come from fat. So that would mean about 630 calories or about five tablespoons could come from fat. Uh, it's likely that you're going to want to consume other forms of fat sometimes and that's okay. Uh, so you would just eat a little bit less olive oil. The chart that you see on this slide shows the grades and descriptions of different kinds of olive oil. The more refined an olive oil, generally the lower the quality, but the higher the smoke point. The more refined olive oils are good for cooking at high temperatures, such as roasting or frying. However, the most nutritional benefits and flavor come from those olive oils that are not refined. The extra virgin olive oils are not refined and are the highest quality of olive oil. These should be used for the dips, salads, and for finishing foods, but not heated at high temperatures. Otherwise, the flavor and quality may be compromised. And pick your protein wisely. Substitute fish and poultry for red meat. And when red meat is eaten, make sure that it is lean and keep the portions small, about the size of a deck of cards, three to, three to four ounces. Also avoid sausage, bacon, and other high fats most often. Aim to eat fish one to two times each week. Um, fresh or water-packed tuna, salmon, trout, mackerel, and herring are healthy choices. Water-packed or frozen are good options too. You don't have to buy fresh every time. Grilled fish tastes good and requires little cleanup, but try to avoid fried fish unless it's sauteed in a small amount of olive oil. Choose from a variety of nuts for a quick snack and look for natural peanut butter rather than those that have hydrogenated oils added. Also for those with diabetes, as mentioned earlier, be sure to pair protein food with a high carbohydrate food to balance out the rise in glucose levels. And then raise a glass to healthy eating. It's okay, if it's okay with your doctor, enjoy a glass of wine with your meal. Any bottle of red will do. You don't need to spend a lot of money on it. Or drinking purple grape juice may be an alternative for those who don't normally drink alcohol. But remember not to overdo it. Moderation means one serving for women and two servings for men daily, and remember a serving is about five ounces. Staying active is just as important to your overall health and is just as key to the Mediterranean lifestyle as eating well. Try to be active for at least 150 minutes per week or for 30 minutes a day on most days of the week. Really consider fitting these activities into your lifestyle rather than making it a chore or a hassle. You don't have to have a gym membership to be active. Try parking at the far end of the parking lot. Walk when you can. Take the stairs when you can. Clean your house. Get outside and garden. Walk around the neighborhood. Go for a hike with friends. Take a bike ride, rake leaves, shovel snow. There are many things you can incorporate into your daily routine to fit in that 30 minutes of activity. And lastly, <clears throat> Excuse me. Lastly, make changes gradually. This is a lifestyle change, so it may require some time. Don't allow yourself to become overwhelmed with trying to do everything at once. Once you make a change and you get used to it, work it into your daily life, then it'll become more of a habit and it will seem natural. For example, starting off may include at least 30 minutes of physical activity a day, or consuming two to three fruits and vegetables in a day. This can be done at a rate that's comfortable, and as time goes on, more changes can be made. And to close, remember following this lifestyle is not about restriction, so be kind to yourself. Allow yourself the foods you like and enjoy, but maybe enjoy them in more moderation and mindfully. Med Instead of Meds is a wonderful website done by, the, by North Carolina State University Extension and some partners. Uh, you can see um, a screenshot of this website here on the screen. Uh, it contains lots of wonderful information about the Mediterranean lifestyle and eating habits. Tips and tricks about how to cook whole grains, 
how to select olive oil, fish, seafood buying tips, uh, Medway kitchen staples, lots of recipes, and much, much more. It includes seven simple steps to eating the Medway. So if you want to make some changes, you can just do it a step at a time, as we mentioned, so it's not so overwhelming. Thank you for watching today. Uh, this has been Barbara Ames, Nutrition, Health, and Food Safety Agent for Wildcat Extension District. Kansas State University is a source of research-based information, and we assist individuals, businesses, and communities in their efforts to find solutions, develop their knowledge base, and better themselves as a whole. The link on this slide can take you to lots of great information. Again, thank you for watching.